Hello. So after brewing a couple of uh, times in my house, my wife uh, and my kids decided that it really stinks pretty bad. So what I'm going to do today is create a wart chiller uh, using some products I bought at the local home improvement store. And I'm actually going to use it to hook up a hose to my garden hose. Um, so this way everything can stay outside. I actually have a turkey fryer pot, which I already had uh, for frying turkeys, go figure. So that, that stays outside, and so the wort chiller is going to stay outside too. So anyway, so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be taking my wort chiller uh, and putting it into the pot. So since I'm custom making it, I'm going to custom make it just for my pot. So I would suggest you probably do the same thing. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'll tell you what I'm using to make the wort chiller. So, again, the aluminum pot, I know aluminum, stainless, whatever. The second item is actually a popcorn tin. Now this one my wife happened to pick up for Christmas. It was a, uh, a Christmas story tin. I'm actually going to use this as kind of like the template because I'm going to stick this in here, which fits, let me show you, it fits about right inside the pot. This does not count toward the price of everything for the war chiller. It kind of is extra. Although it will be good for when I'm drinking my beer to eat some of this. Okay, so uh, what I have is some plumber's tape, which I've already had myself. I have some clear tubing, which is going to be the exhaust, if you will, or the business end of the war chiller. I have 20 feet of 3 8 copper tubing. Uh, then I have some adapters, which we'll kind of, I'll describe more along the lines uh, when we get there. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So, when you get your copper tubing, it's going to come in a flat tube, as I showed you before. It's going to be all coiled up. So, the first thing you're going to do is try not to, not to kink it up, because that could be a bad thing. Just kind of stretch it out a little bit. So, this way, uh, it won't tangle up when you put it inside the popcorn tin. Despite what you may think, this is actually pretty flexible tubing. So we're just going to try to kind of fit it around here. Just a little. There we go, pretty easy. Uh, no, now just so you know, uh, we're not done yet. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this tubing, now that it's not kinked up at all, Make sure that it's okay. And then we're gonna start to tighten it. And while we're doing that, we're gonna kinda make sure we have enough space in between our coils, because really the surface area around the tubing is what's gonna cool everything. So you wanna kinda maximize that space. funny because I've actually seen some videos online on how to do this and uh, it often seems like they're using a lot more energy and taking a lot more time to, to do this and that seemed pretty easy to me right okay that's real time by the way all right so let's take this off of here can't just simply put this inside the pot like that because you have no way to get it out, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to use this end here. I guess we call this the bottom end. I'm actually going to unravel this so slightly. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to feed this piece here through the middle of the work chiller. And be careful not to bend this. Try to be as gentle as we can, just kind of slow bends. Be careful over here because this is where it's really going to kink up. And it could be uh, could be a problem for you if that does happen. Okay. I'm going to need a little bit more space because I've got a pretty tall turkey fryer here. So I'm going to 
Let's see if I can bend this a little bit more without pushing it through there. So maybe this is why it takes a little bit longer than I've seen on the YouTube videos. Because <laughs> we want to make sure to be gentle with this. Now, one thing I did notice one day somebody was doing, uh, they actually put salt into here and fed it through a funnel and kind of closed up that end. Uh, so this way it wouldn't actually kink up, which is a pretty smart idea. I'm just a little too anxious to get this done. So that's why I'm kind of doing it my own way here. Now, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to work, right? Although pretty would be nice. It looks good on video at least, right? Okay, so that's that. Then what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this piece here and I'm gonna fold it over because it's gonna rest on the outside of the... on the outside of the pot. Okay. Get a little bit more space. What I'm going to do with this piece here is I'm actually going to take this tubing, and again, it doesn't have to be pretty. So I'm just going to kind of bend this guy like that. Okay. So then, when I put it inside the pot, I'll have some space to maneuver everything I'm going to need. going to do next. I asked a friendly gentleman at Home Depot uh, what I need to do to make a three inch tubing into a garden hose. So uh, what I have here is a compression adapter. So this way I can just kind of slip it on there without any kind of welding. Then from the compression adapter, because that's actually three eighths, I'm actually going to go from uh, three eighths to half an inch like so with this bushing, pipe bushing. And then from half an inch to three quarters of an inch, which is about the size of what you're gonna need for a garden hose. So this is gonna be the intake of the wort chiller. Everything's gonna come on down. And then the return is gonna be coming up through um, the end of the pipe. So let's go ahead and take care of this. Okay, so at the home improvement store, I was able to get um, this compression tubing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to Take the sleeve, that's what this guy is. I'm going to put it right inside there like that. Actually, first I'm going to put the nut on. Okay, then I'm going to put the sleeve in here. What I actually did was I took some of the, uh, the plumber's tape, which you can get for about 97 cents at the home improvement store of your choice, whether it be the orange one or the blue one. Uh, then I'm going to actually put, push this all the way in. This is the, um, the thread or actually the, uh, the threading here. And I'm gonna hand tighten this. And then I'm gonna have to wrench tighten it as well. Okay, now that I actually have a wrench to wrench tighten this. <laughs> See, sometimes it prepares yourself. So remember that table that I was showing in the beginning with everything I needed for the project? Well, I kind of lied. You do need a wrench. I guess it would help if I read the instructions before I started this. Okay, so I have another wrench here, which we're going to hand, we're going to tighten this with the wrenches. And what this is doing is it's creating compression inside the tubing that we, we just have. So this way, you won't have to worry about soldering anything. Okay. All right, so that seems pretty pretty tight now. Looks like fair enough. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the adapter here, the pipe bushing, and we're gonna apply it right onto here because we're kinda wanna make this bigger and bigger as we go along so we could eventually fit into the hose 
the hosing that we have. So uh, again, we'll kind of take some plumber's tape, which when this thing starts leaking and you don't apply plumber's tape, you're gonna wish that you did. So it kind of just goes right on there. And then once you have it on, you're gonna have to stretch it because that's what kind of makes it wrap around really tight. If you, you may be able to see the threads that are still on there. So you're not harming the threads at all. All right, then we're just gonna tighten this guy up here like that. Now because you're dealing with water, uh, you'll probably have to use wrenches to get this all squared away uh, because otherwise you're gonna get some leaking. But I guess at this point, what you could do is actually test everything out before you actually do it. Okay, so we have our compression link here, our compression adapter, and then we have the uh, bushing that gets us from a three eighths of an inch to a half an inch. And now we're actually gonna apply the garden hose adapter onto there. So if you're gonna be going with a half inch OD or outside diameter wort chiller, you're probably going to um, you're going to spend a little bit more money in the tubing. It's, it was actually probably about twenty dollars more, so about two thirds more expensive for the larger tubing. But I guess you'll save some money in the adapters. <laughs> I'll go over the pricing a little bit later on. Okay, so we're going to get our plumber's tape again. wrap it around here it doesn't have to be perfect because actually will create a better bond with the metal the silicone will if you do that but you have to just apply it uh, evenly that would be, be the the main objective here so now we're actually going to turn this on to here we're again hand tightening it the exception of the compression link because otherwise if you don't tighten that with a wrench right away you're going to get some leakage All right, so just to go over everything, we have our compression adapter here that went from the copper tubing to here. That was 3 8 Then we have an adapter that goes from 3 8 to a half an inch. And then from a half an inch, uh, we go into the garden hose. And that's actually, this may look familiar to you, our garden hose adapter. Now, I'm going to quickly turn this around because let's not forget our clear vinyl tubing. Now, this isn't food grade tubing, but it doesn't have to be because it's not going inside of your uh, kettle or when you're chilling your wort, it's actually just gonna push some water through it. So what I will actually have to eventually do is get a clamp and toss it onto here um, when we're chilling the, chilling the wort and slip it right onto there and then put a clamp on there. But since what we're gonna do right now is just kind of uh, check it out and make sure it works properly, I'm just gonna leave it like this. Let's go check it out now, shall we? Okay, now just to warn you a little bit, this may not be the prettiest setup, it's just a matter of uh, getting it all done. However, as you can see here, I've got the hose coming in through here. This is probably just a matter of my hose being crummy. Uh, but there's no actually, there's no water, cold water here going into the pot. If you notice here also too, all my fittings are not, they're not leaking whatsoever. So the kubi coming, it's coming down and I've got my plastic tubing, which I will put a clamp on, I promise, runs down, and uh, there you go. There you have the cold water coming out that would probably be hot uh, once we get everything going along. Now back to the table. Okay, there you have it. Again, I want to take a note uh, that you want to make sure to put a clamp on the vinyl tubing uh, on the, as I like to call, the business end of the wort chiller. Okay, again, the tools you're going to need, a wrench, a monkey wrench or two, that's all for the fittings here. Some plumber's tape, which is also very helpful. Of course, a Christmas Story popcorn tin, very, very helpful. Copper tubing and the vinyl tubing. Now, you can buy a wort chiller uh, online, probably for about $60 or so. Maybe a little bit more, a little less. What's going to kill you is the shipping. So this type of setup is actually pretty good. You can also go to your home brew store. It's probably going to run you $55, $60 as well. You don't want to have to pay tax. So, this whole thing right here uh, cost me about $42 to make. The most expensive part of it being the vinyl tubing. That was about 20 
Um, the vinyl tubing was about $5, so if you have that lying around, you might as well use that. And then the compression fittings uh, probably cost me about $10 or $12. Uh, a couple of notes about uh, why a word chiller is actually kind of helpful. Number one, it doesn't smell up the house when you bring it inside, because in my case, I'm actually going to leave this all outside. It attaches to the guard hose. Number two, you want to make sure to, to get your wort chilled as quickly as possible, because that actually will have, the longer it sits out, the more bacteria will get inside of it. Another note, too, you may want to do is while you're boiling your brew, your wort, you may want to drop this wort chiller inside of here and let it go for about five or six minutes. This way you can actually sanitize it. You could also spray it with some star sand or something like that. And then just drop it in and when the oil is done, drop this in, turn things on, and you're good to go. Another thing you may want to do while you're doing that is to simply just put a lid on top of here. That'll help with any kind of bacteria getting in. It'll actually resist that as well. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, if you want to find out more, check out my blue my brew blog online. Say that three times fast. And uh, please leave as many comments as you feel free to. And I'll try to answer them, I promise.